G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for another trade video. Today, we are taking a look at some of the trades that we've discussed on this channel. And you know, in the AFL media broadly, all the rumors swirling around today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all of the trade rumors into a tier maker, and I'm gonna rank them based on the likelihood that I think they are likely to occur. So a bit of a disclaimer, I'm recording this in advance because I'm about to go on a trip to Greece. So if anything juicy pops up this week, unfortunately, I wasn't here to see it. So the rumors we'll be discussing in this video are really the ones we've covered on the channel up to this point, which is about six days before you actually watch it. And a lot of the trade rumors that I cover in my every AFL team's uh, trade plans this off season. So got about 15 to 20 names on the board here and we're just gonna rank them uh, by the likelihood that they are to, to switch clubs. So this is the tier maker format that I've got. Uh, so you've got five tiers from very likely, more likely than unlikely, 50 50s, more unlikely than likely and very unlikely. So I'm sure that you've seen a tier maker before, but uh, what we're gonna do is drag each player into the category based on how likely the rumor of them leaving is going to be true. Now I messed up, I, I did a double up of both Dusty Martin and Devin Robertson, um, which was a mistake. It is a total coincidence that they're the hottest two guys on the list, that was an accident. So you'll just have to bear with me, but all we're gonna do is go through the names below like such. So we'll start with Ben McCarr, North Melbourne. Uh, now, this one's tricky because he's linked to three different clubs, but if we can broaden the question to how likely it is that Ben McCarr is going to leave North Melbourne, I think this one is the most telegraphed certain thing to happen this offseason. There has been almost no suggestion that North Melbourne's even trying to keep him. They're going to match an offer. Uh, they're going to wait to see what the offer is. So it is a little unclear who, who it's likely to be. And based on how big that offer is, they'll decide whether they want to match it with their own offer to generate compensation. They've kind of been very open about that possibility. So Ben Mackay leaving is very likely, as we discussed in previous videos, it seems like Sydney and Hawthorne have emerged um, as some of the front runners ahead of Essendon, although previously up until this point, it has been the Bombers. So we'll move on there. Who else we got down here? Oh yeah, like I always do with tier makers, I like to put one in each category to start us off. Uh, who's very unlikely? I'm going to put Dustin Martin as very unlikely. Uh, I did sort of float this as something that's been reported on. The link to Gold Coast and Hardwick is obviously there, but I don't think this rumor was ever reported on as too serious. Prestia, actually, we'll put in there with him. There is different shades of likelihood with these two guys. It seems like the Prestia one seems a little more like there's smoke. But at the same time, I would still say it's very unlikely at this stage. So who else have we got? I will chuck in Devitt Robertson as a 50-50. Uh, this one is that I think he wants to stay at the Brisbane Lions. He really wants to, but he's been offered four years versus two years to go to the West Coast Eagles and probably going to get a lot more certainty of game time as well. So I think he's genuinely going to be weighing that up. Apparently, he's two of their facilities. But for the most part, I think he wants to stay at Brisbane and be part of a successful team in the short term. So uh, I could see that one going either way at this point. More likely than unlikely, Mitch Georgiatis, I will put, is more likely than unlikely. The fact that he's this late in the season coming off an ACL and reportedly has a contract offer from Port Adelaide suggests to me that he might want to switch clubs. Uh, I'm not too sure what his motivations are and I don't think it's necessarily going to be a Western Australian club but Georgie Artis not having signed from what I can tell. A little bit of a smoke and fire situation there. Who else? Who's probably more unlikely than likely? You know what? Probably Harley Reid. I have ch cheekily chucked him in here because the number one pick is is likely to be sought after. In fact, reportedly very sought after this offseason uh, with Melbourne in particular coming hard now that is West Coast's pick to trade. Uh, I think West Coast will consider offers, but I think it's unlikely that they get an offer that satisfies them because I'm sure they do ha rate Harley Reid. So it's somewhere between 50-50, but more unlikely than likely. Tyler Brockman. I think this one is pretty certain. Uh, back to Western Australia as a... Small forward there who um, gets, you know, decent opportunities at Hawthorne. Not an absolute locked-in best 22 player. Um, got a young family and sort of similar to Tim Kelly, but also not that similar in circumstance. He's likely to be going home for family reasons. So I think him going back to Western Australia is pretty likely. Darcy Parrish, I think, is very unlikely, uh, to be honest. I think that one is still working through the finer details with Essendon in terms of haggling for money. I think if, if it's that progressed in proceedings, uh, there's a good chance he's going to stay. Essendon just need to find the cash or he needs to compromise. If he doesn't, though, there is a slight chance that Geelong uh, snap him up. There, That is the prevailing rumor. Brandon Zerk Thatcher, I will put, is more likely than unlikely. Uh, it does sound like some uh, teams are coming hard for him and Essendon have taken their sweet time trying to negotiate a deal for him, I, uh, he's had a breakout year. Look, I could be wrong. It could be a case of them waiting to see how much money they have after the Parish situation, but that one's iffy. I don't really know. So maybe I should be putting him in 50-50, but I'll say more likely than unlikely because 
I feel like a player of that ilk would have been signed up by now, so it's a little bit sus. Jade Gresham, I think, is more likely than unlikely. I don't think it sounds like there's a massive desperation from St Kilda to try and uh, to keep him, and I think he's a quality player, so that, that surprises me, but perhaps I'm just reading the tea leaves wrong there. He's been linked to Carlton and Essendon, and uh, as a free agent, you can see the temptation of him going to join Carlton right now. They look like a team on the rise, so we'll see what happens there. Either way, a little bit odd that he hasn't been signed up if he is indeed a free agent. Brody Grundy, I will put as more likely than unlikely. Uh, that's an interesting one because uh, we're getting mixed messages about it. Melbourne seemed like they're pretty committed to keeping him. Mind you, the, the why would they comment anything else uh, during the season? But there is absolutely a lot of rumours linking him to Port Adelaide and Geelong in particular, and I think potentially Sydney too. Brody Grundy's probably too proud to, to want to stick around and be playing the twos or play uh, you know second ruckman and uh, and predominantly be a forward. I don't think that's going to work out. So I think he's going to try and move, and I think Melbourne will respect his wishes if that happens. So, so more likely than unlikely. Who else have we got here? Liam Henry seems more likely than unlikely as well. These are starting to add up. Maybe I will move Brendan Zerk Thatcher down, but Henry's a former top turn pick. He has shown reasonable development this year, um, but a lot of the rumors are suggesting that he is going to make a move out of Fremantle this year. And on face value, it seems more likely than unlikely. And he's going to have some Victorian suitors for him for sure. I am going to look here at Matthew Crouch. I think this has dropped down to 50-50. Matthew Crouch finding a new home because it's part, partly is I don't know who is going to be on the market for a 28 turning 29 year old next year uh, inside mid. He's got some clear deficiencies, but he's been playing some good football. And uh, the fact that he's playing good football simultaneously, it means he's probably more valuable to Adelaide than he used to be, but his trade value definitely hasn't gone up. And therefore, I would have said this one was pretty certain a few weeks ago, but now I'm thinking Matt Crouch is 50-50. Zach Fisher is another 50-50 one. Uh, I think I understand he wants to stay at Carlton, but wants more midfield minutes. And uh, while he's contracted to Carlton, that means that there's no necessity for a deal to be brokered this year, uh, but there has been links to North Melbourne most recently uh, to get some genuine midfield minutes. But he's playing some good footy at the Blues right now, so I think that might have swung things the other way. I think it was more likely um, a few weeks ago, but I think his current form and a finals berth for Carlton means that uh, he might just stick around for one more year. Yeah, upon reflection, I'm going to use Brendan Zerk Thatcher down to 50-50 because, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know. Sam Flanders, I think, has moved into the more unlikely than likely uh, category, I suppose. Um, there has been a lot of interest in him, uh, reportedly from Collingwood is the latest one that I've heard, but it's had a breakout year, and I do think, that, honestly do think that there's a chance that Hardwick coming in and signing as the Suns new coach would give him a little bit of uh, incentive to stay to be honest and to be honest I haven't also heard very strong rumors he's leaving it's more just that he's out of contract and, and probably getting interest but based on what we've heard so far I think I think it's 50-50 plus logically I just think there's a good chance he's going to stay at the Gold Coast Suns where he's had a breakout year like I said Tom Dode as well I'm starting to think might be more unlikely than likely he's a name that has been uh, linked to a move this off season from what I can gather Adelaide want to keep him but they've lowballed him a little bit and his ACL injury he does not work in his favor in terms of a negotiating standpoint. So I think what Dode's then done is gone and tested the market and seen if he can get a longer contract somewhere else. And reading between the lines and the distinct lack of rumors, the, the closest thing we've heard to a rumor about Dode leaving was John Ralph saying he's not sure if Brisbane have offered something. It may be the case that Dode doesn't get a tantalizing enough offer to leave the Crows this offseason. And therefore, I think it's actually more unlikely than likely, but I could be reading that wrong. We, are, we do have a long way to go, to be fair. Asava Radagalera, I'm th starting to think this is more likely than unlikely, purely because uh, for what good reason is there that uh, Rosava hasn't re-signed at the Cats? Obviously, they're going through a transition period. They have just seen some retirements. Um, what's the bet by the time I've done this, Rosava's re-signed with Geelong? But I'm just working off the facts that I have so far. But he's been linked to uh, most specifically Port Adelaide and a little bit of the Brisbane Lions as well. And finally, Kai Lohman. We're going to ignore the second Dev and the second Dusty Martin there. Uh, I just wanted to slip in the shirtless pick, obviously. But Kai Lohman is a player that I highlighted in my trade plans video. Uh, he's one of a few Brisbane Lions uh, like Dev. He's not the only one in this video, uh, in fact, who are having a pretty good year in the VFL. I think he's kicked bags uh, and uh, pretty talented small forward. Was picked 20, if I'm not mistaken. And there's genuine interest and there's a market for a small forward at the moment. I think the Dogs and the Hawks are two clubs that I have read are uh, interested in, you know, respectfully, why would you stay at the Brisbane Lions if, uh, if he's at a critical point in his career and he wants to get more opportunity? Moving to the Dogs or the Hawks uh, would actually be a possibly pretty good career move, I would have thought. So I'm going to say Kyle Lohman is more likely than unlikely. So there we have it, guys. That is my synopsis of all the trade uh, rumors, I suppose, and, and categorize them into how likely I think they are. So Ben McKay and Brockman, I think, are pretty certain. Uh, the next tier would be Georgiatis, Gresham, Grundy, 
Henry, Isava, and uh, young Kyle Lohman there are probably more likely to happen than unlikely. The 50-50s that I generally don't know would be Dev Robertson, Zach Fisher, Brendan Zirk Thatcher, and Matthew Crouch. There's a few that I think are unlikely. Harley Reid uh, via pick one is probably less likely than 50-50 to move. And the same with Sam Flanders and Tom Doday, I think, has uh, probably run himself out of options a little bit. Uh, the very unlikely ones are Prestier and Martin. That's a little bit of a pipe dream. Um, and Darcy Parrish, I think, reading between the lines on, on how that's been reported it does sound like he will stay at Essendon anyway guys that is my take on it all let me know in the comments what you agree with and what you disagree with and any other rumors that I've missed I'll probably do another version of this uh, sometime you know closer to the trade period itself but hope you're doing well hope you're appreciating the content uh, I like I said I'm in Greece right now so I'm thinking of you all I'm not uh, but in all seriousness do really appreciate the support I hope you're doing well and I'll see you in the next video Auf Wiedersehen that's Greek right